Well, it's my last day on this Washington trip. I'm out at the Westport Jetty. You know, honestly, this trip was a little bit rushed. If I had to do it all over again, I would give myself at least three weeks to do this. I did this all in six days. This is the sixth day right now. I'm gonna try to do this again next year, hopefully get in contact with a few more people and do something epic. So yesterday, it was just so freaking windy. I couldn't catch a thing and there was just a ton of kelp and seaweed everywhere. Today I got out here at 8 a.m. That's what time it is now. Hoping I could beat the wind. For now, I'm just gonna try cast out a Berkeley gulp. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna head out far on that jetty. That's a long jetty. I don't know if you can see all the way out there, but that thing goes out probably a mile. Uh, three quarters of a mile, something like that. Anyway, let's get on to fishing. Well, today I'm gonna start off throwing the easy stuff. I've got the sandworm here since I got that rigged up already and I've got some shrimp, so I'll be throwing bait first. And after a while, then I'll switch over to the swim bait. I just wanna start off the day good, get my confidence up. Now I'm just gonna let this, I'm gonna troll, troll this back real slow, see if I get any hits. Do that only two times. If I don't get any hits, then I'll fish closer to the rocks, try to get some rockfish. So you can say I'm just testing the waters right now. And this test doesn't seem to be going so well. Well, my reconnaissance mission has come back with nothing on the radar. So we're gonna try a new area now. All right, now before I walk down another half mile, let's see if I can get something to bite on this shrimp. Oh, there's a fish and it feels like a good one. Oh, it's fighting, it's fighting. Oh, it's a fighter. What the heck is this? It's taking a dive. Jeez, look at that thing. Holy moly, that's a huge kelp greenling. Wow, look at that thing. Oh my God, that is huge. What the hell? That thing bit quick. He swallowed that shrimp. Jeez. All right, one hit with the knife right here. So I just dispatched him, and while his heart is bleeding, I'm just gonna cut his throat. He should bleed out. God, look at that fish though. Goodness gracious, that thing is heavy. Look, you can totally see the hook through its throat coming all the way down. No way that I was gonna lose that fish. Well, shoot, I've got a cooler full of ice. I'm just gonna gut him right now and put him on the ice. <laughs> look, I even got my little shrimp back. This might be the lucky piece of shrimp. So I'm gonna put it back on the hook and use it again. I don't know if you can see that white meat in there. Look at that white meat inside. All right, he's pretty nicely cleaned. I'm gonna throw him in my cooler full of ice. Abalone shell from earlier. Some smoked salmon for lunch. Another piece of shrimp. Let's try that again. All right, now the real test to see was that a fluke or are there more fish out here like that? We'll see, that might have just saved me a half mile walk. If I can catch a couple of them like this so close to shore, there's no need to walk out that far. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I'm using a 30 pound surf leader, high low rig, two size two hooks, and a four ounce coin weight. I'm just doing the same thing as if I were fishing the jetty in the Half Moon Bay in the Bay Area. I'm just casting in one spot, letting it soak there for five, six minutes, if nothing, just casting out five feet in a different location. There might be another hole, it might be deeper. I might fish this for another 10 minutes then walk down, I don't know, 100 feet or so. All right, y'all, let's walk down the jetty a little bit more. I'm gonna keep all my gear here and just bring another piece of shrimp just in case I lose some. The current is pretty strong here. That's another reason why I like to use such a heavy weight four ounce weight, something that'll stay on the bottom in one spot and not get washed around back and forth between the rocks. All right, gonna give this a try again with fresh piece of bait. There's a steep ledge that I cast off of just one feet towards me. It's only like four feet deep. But right here, it's like 15 feet deep. Now the only problem is bringing it up, not to get the hook snag on the rock or something. There's another one. Good sized fish right here. Oh, two of them. Two of them, look. 
Cabazon and a kelp greenling, both at the same time. That little hole is pretty good. Oh, he just spit my shrimp. Well, if that doesn't resemble the jetty in San Francisco, I don't know what does. All right, little Cabazon, hope you survive. A kelp greenling. I'm using big pieces of shrimp. All the fish were caught on that. Just breaking it in half, taking the shell off. Fat side on first, thin side on second, just so the hook tip will come through. It's funny, I'll cast out straight in front of me, I won't get any bites. But if I reel in and cast out just five feet to my right, watch how quick I get bites. There's a fish. Look at the size of this kelp greenling. If you're going fishing for rockfish, this will be a fish that you catch a lot of if there's kelp greenling around. This type, this size right here. Compared to the one that I caught earlier, that thing was huge. With these polarized sunglasses, I can see a dark spot right there, which is a big rock. And it's blue to the right of it, which is water, so it should drop down. So let me try right over there. Oh, look at that hit. That was a nice hit right there. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. What are you? Nice. Oh, a rockfish. Wait, no. That's another cabazon. Different color though. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I know, I know, I know. Just relax, just relax. See those spines on the cabazon? That's what I'm talking about. They're sharp and they're poisonous. That's why a lingcod won't eat these as willingly as they would eat a kelp greenling. Kelp greenling is just like meat, just meat. He's also got this little thing right here that looks like kelp. I think that's to attract other fish so he can ambush them. Another beautiful fish right here. Too bad it's so small. I think I'm gonna walk out a little bit farther. I don't know if you see that boater out there. I think he's got a salmon on his line. He's got a fish on the pole and he just got his net ready. Yeah, he's got a big salmon in the boat. Oh man, that's gotta be a 20 pounder. It's my last day in Washington. I might as well give it a shot. Even if my chances are slim to none. So for anyone who's interested, I'm using this number five Pentac spinner. Little chartreuse here, pinched barb. Oh my God. Oh, there's bait jumping right here, right in front of me. Oh my God, a school of bait jumping right in front of me. Almost in casting distance too. Oh, there they are. Okay, my bait's right on him. Come on, please, Salmon, hit me. Just a little big, big old ball of them right here. I think this is as good a chance as I'll ever have. Dolphins and everything are pushing the bait right towards me. Bait's jumping, birds diving. Oh my God, they're all over there. There's a trailing salmon on me right now. I'm not even kidding. There's a trailing salmon on my fit, my lure. It was a small one, but it was one. So for fishing all day, pretty good. I haven't lost one rig yet. Like I said earlier, got these size two hooks on a high low rig, 30 pound test, four ounce coin weight. My coin weight is all banged up, all banged up on these rocks, but nothing's broken yet because I got that heavy tackle. You need that heavy tackle. I'd say 30 pound minimum to fish these rocks. This little hole between the rocks 
now that I switched back to rock fishing, just bouncing it down. Okay, found it. There's the hole. Just bounce it down until it goes as deep as possible. And I got to hit immediately at first. I thought I had one. Ooh, another nice kelp greenling. That's number two right there. That's a keeper, no doubt. That's a heavy fish. But just because, let's give him a measure. Although I'm, I'm almost certain that he's good. Needs to be 12 inches. Yep, and he's over 13. Check that out. Another nice one. Swallowed it. It's fine with me. It's my dinner. Check out the fins. The little yellow pattern on them. See what I mean? That they don't have very many spikes. Even if you go the opposite direction on their dorsal fin, it's not going to prick you like, like a perch would or nearly any other fish. Even on the bottom, it's smooth, just like kelp. They live in kelp, probably they mimic kelp. That's why they call it a kelp greenling. I should probably start heading back, getting hungry. I brought all my gear out here, but you know I forgot the most important thing. And I can't forget that on the last episode of this West Coast tour, the butter. Damn, it's in the car. Well, on the way back, I had to get my butter. But another thing that I could not pass by as I was driving along, these blackberries. So I got a tub full. And this is only from one spot. Like, they, these are ripe for the picking right now. Look how juicy and plump these are. My hands are all red from the juices already. But I've got to clean this fish up. Look, they've been on ice this entire time. Look at that one. Look at that one. Man. I think I'm gonna fillet this one. And I would like to do a little experiment. I'm gonna eat half the fish with the skin on, the other half with the skin off. But the only problem with some of these fish, other than perch, is when you fry them, when you put that skin side in, it bends them, twists them all up, so you can't get an even cooking on both sides. But I'm gonna cook my butter, a little, put it on a little higher temperature. Hopefully that does the trick. So they do have scales. So I'm just gonna go backwards with my knife. Once you get started, it's not too hard. Now, honestly, just one side of this is going to be enough for me. So I'm only going to fillet one side now. I'll keep the other side on for later. But look at that nice, it's all scaled. When you go this way on the scales, on the skin, brings up where the scales were. But if you brush it down, it shows the natural color of what it once was. So to me, filleting a fish with a pocket knife like this is pretty rewarding, pretty satisfying. Go up to the head, and then just along the spine, along that dorsal fin on the back, just cut. Thin cut, and my mouth is starting to water already. And just go follow that as close as you can to the spine, and you do it all the way to the tail. Now just following it over the rib cage, I cut through the pin bones, just right over the rib cage. And there we are, a beautiful half filet. Nice chunk of meat right here. That was the butthole at one point. Look at that filet. Now before I do anything else, I'm just gonna cut those pin bones out. So I've got half this filet with the skin on, the other half without. I'm just gonna cut it where the skin meets. All right, now before we continue, got a little garlic salt and pepper. I'm just gonna season the fish first. Now for the final episode of the Washington West Coast tour trip, you know I had to have my butter. So I'm gonna cut a little piece. Actually, why don't we just do it like this? Let the beat drop. Now we're going to cook the skin side down first. Hopefully that crisps up fast. But you know what else I want to try? Since I'm out here anyway. Got these wonderful blackberries. Why don't I throw some blackberries in with this butter mix and see if that adds anything to it. Mmm, I smell those blackberries already cooking in that butter. Wow. Actually, that smells really good. I'm gonna add a couple more. Make those blackberries in. 
Ooh, it smells like blackberry jam. Check that out. One fish right here, skin side down. Oh baby, and another one. You can tell, look, how, look at how this fish is curling up with the skin already. That's the one thing that I don't like about cooking with skin. Unless the fish is whole, then it's a different story. I really wonder how this is gonna taste. Blackberries, butter, and fish? Weird combo, but I bet it's gonna be good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this one side. All right, this little corner is done. Let's see how this tastes. Mm, just as I remember how Kel Greenling tastes. Amazing. All right, let's taste this blackberry cooked in butter and fish. Oh, super sweet, super buttery, yum. It's like candy, mm, caramelized blackberry. All right, now let's try a piece with the skin. It may look burnt, but it's not. All right, yeah, it is a little bit. But anyway, it's not as black as it looks. It's just a little charred, but there's still a lot of juicy skin on there. Mmm. At first, it's like it's not even fish. It's just kind of blackberry and butter. And then afterwards, you get that kelp greenling. Look at that. If anybody has any tips on how to cook a fish, filleted but with the skin on and how not to make it all just get deformed please let me know i'm very interested in that check this fish out oh yeah those flakes on this cup greenling just flakes off like that if i were to do this again i wouldn't cook it at such a high heat i would cook it at a lower heat for longer so the sugars in the blackberry doesn't burn but other than that I'm kind of liking this blackberry butter fish. Anyway, that is the West Coast tour trip. It was a little bit rushed, I feel like. I would like to do this again next year and maybe do an entire month. Spend like three or four days in each spot and a couple days to edit, and move on to the next spot and really get in contact with some people who know what they're doing up here. Because for me, it was just like a spontaneous random thing. I was like, hey, why not go to Washington? So I went up, only had six days I'm about to go on another trip when I come back home. So everything was kind of packed into this tight little time frame. But anyway, if you do live in Washington or Oregon on the West Coast, leave a comment or, or email me. Uh, if you check on the About section on my YouTube channel, there's my email address. Or if you leave your email address in the comments, I will contact you for hopefully next year if I do this again and you're open to it, me getting up here again and doing more filming and fishing in your neck of the woods. But anyway, thanks for watching. That concludes the West Coast tour. I'm sure that I'll come up with some random idea next.